All right, that is Back When I Was Brilliant by the amazing Future of the Left. That is off of the Peace and Truth, the Peace and Truth of Future of the Left. And before that, we had Reggie has his best of training off of the latest Christian fitness record with the uh, lovely and delicious title, both, of This Taco is Not Correct. And joining with us, of course, is a returning four-time champion for Protonic Reversal, Falco, welcome. Hey, how are you? Crowd going wild, as per normal. Yeah, that's uh, enriching. <laughs> uh, th- thanks so much for co- coming back to the show, man. It's always great to talk to you. Uh, it- it's you- you- You're a busy boy. There- there's a lot going on. You're, you're very it's busy. It's a pleasure. I'm-, I'm not doing anything else at quarter past one in the morning on a Friday. So it's <laughs> you're, fun. You're, you're not putting together yet another magnum opus. Uh, for uh, delivery of no, the world. No, no. There's there's been a pause in the opus making. <laughs> a pause in the opus making would be a, a, a pause a... in the opus making. Yeah, which and if that isn't true, then it's certainly a euphemism. I'll be looking to uh, to work into everyday conversation sometime soon. I was gonna say, I think you, that can that can hold true for many different situations for sure, and it, it's certainly mm-hmm. song title worthy to say the least. Uh, it is. And why well, you'd have to again lose some words. Is, is as ridiculous as the titles can be. There's always that feeling sometimes that you're trying too hard, you know. Just because just because a song title is long and contains more than one thought doesn't necessarily mean it's clever. I think it's a question of it's a question of being selective. I mean, what was that 1975 album which came out this year called? I I mean, it was just a really really long title which sounded like it had been mistranslated from Klingon. You know, <laughs> right? Like it's it's uh, been put through the the translator, then back again, uh, so many times that it actually becomes a form of art or poetry in and of itself. Beyond. Yeah, but with art and poetry in huge inverted commas, you know, <laughs> right? Art, yeah. air quotes, art, yeah. poetry. Art, <laughs> if you just if you just entered the world, then absolutely it's art. If that's your only frame of reference, but no, in a, in a general sense, this is it's as much art as it is melted cheese. Hmm. That's that. That could be a good biography title, perhaps. Hey, I'm. I like melted cheese. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, I was I gonna say melted cheese is I lovely. Just don't buy it. I just don't buy it. I just don't buy its merchandise. Right. There's a difference between being on team melted cheese and just, yeah, just being a and fan. Just melted cheese. Yeah. Yeah. No. You don't. You don't. You don't need to be a fan of some things. You know. To to enjoy pesto, you don't. You don't need to sink your dick into it, you know. You don't need to, but I suppose you could. <laughs> it's it's always an option. It's always an option. Mm. Life is a, life is options. Life is options. Life is options. Uh, th- so getting, I'm I'm glad we're getting just right into it, uh, right out of the <laughs> gate for sure, so to speak, in, in many levels. <laughs> Uh, this taco is not correct. I, I think that that, uh, yeah. th- that I think that could go a couple ways. Uh, the ways mm-hmm. the way I think about it for that title is uh, you know either like hey you 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 made this is the incorrect order you did not give me the order that I that I actually asked for, or it sure. could be there you know it's a there's something wrong with that boy kind of kind of situation as well. Like this taco is not correct. There there's something. Well, too, well, where the title actually comes from, and uh, this is. Uh, you know, an online. It, it, this is well. I know this is. The, I haven't talked about this before with anybody other than my wife, and she pretended to be interested for most of the conversation. <laughs> um, it was I had three ideas I was considering for the album title, and Michael um, at Aesthetic Apparatus in Minneapolis, who we've used for artwork for years, um, he uh, couldn't remember what the title I sent him was. I said I liked the idea of an, an angel, sat, a silhouette of an angel sat down holding his head viewed through a keyhole. And he sent me that back and he couldn't remember what title I'd said. So he wrote, this taco is not correct underneath it. And I said, <laughs> and I just, I replied to him, you know, and asked him if that was some kind of weird local saying that I wasn't aware of. Right, he right, said, right. No, it, was, it was just actually a random collection of words he just typed out. And that really appealed to me, the idea that that would then become meaningful in, in some way. Because the whole point of, you know, the image is that the the, the silhouetted angel is, is pondering something which is ridiculously unimportant. 
you know, racked with anguish over nothing. So this taco <laughs> is not correct. As, as much as we all value tacos um, in the correct context, uh, it just it just seemed perfect for it. And he said, what? So I've named the album as well. I'm like, yeah, yeah, totally, totally accident. Like, you know, you might send a little bit of, of work over to somebody and you'll write stupid title here, you know? <laughs> right, Laura, Laura Mipsum, et cetera. Yeah, whatever, whatever that. Yeah, in the same way that you do that, um, he did that. And that, that's, that's how the title happened. Talent isn't uh, coming up with stuff. Talent's spotting stuff when you see it, you know? Yeah. Always being... Always being alive for things to uh, to appropriate, you know, or just a thing which captures a thought that, that you didn't even know you'd had yet. Is oh my god, that sounds like magical realism. I'll oh, shut up. <laughs> but, yeah, not not quite the audience for this show, no. But yeah, certainly, but half beer. That's out, That's outrageous. <laughs> he's 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 off the rails already, folks. It's 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 crazy. He's, I think he's larping. Oh, I'm not sure. Has, yeah, he has two bottles of Peroni sometimes and goes mental. He even sits down. <laughs> so, and and this this record, and of course we're speaking of the Christian Fitness record. Uh, this taco is not correct. Uh-huh. Very new, very new. At the time of this taping, at the time uh, the folks listening live can can listen to our voices. It's a a week and a half, two weeks, something along those lines. Yeah, a week and a half. Well, I just got all the parts, and Michael sent through the cover and. We just mastered it, and you could, of course, follow the, you know, what anybody with any common sense would do and trail it a little bit, even on a small level. But I just got excited and released it, <laughs> you know. Oh, right. no, I've got everything. It's 10 o'clock at night. It doesn't matter. Yeah, the like... people are buy it are going to buy it anyway. The people are going to ignore it, going to ignore it anyway. I just, some guy on Facebook said he wanted to know if he'd have it in the morning for his commute, and I thought, ah, oh, why not? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you don't listen to it on at work if that's what the hell you want. You know, but I just it felt like actually having a useful function in the world at a moment like that. You know, you could actually improve somebody's yeah, sure. commute to work. Sometimes you don't rationalise stuff you do as a as a musician so as precisely as that. So that's it's very it's very nice to hear that, and it, it reminds you of the way you listen to music yourself and, and how much. How much fun and enjoyment that can bring. Yeah, it doesn't all have to be premiered on you know, southwickvegetarian.net or whatever along those lines. Like You can just no, get it straight up to the people. You don't, you don't need to have... <laughs> You know, an exclusive of you. You know, uh, an exclusive of you tuning tuning your guitar or trying out a new, trying out a new effect pedal, which is the coolest thing in the world for an hour, and then becomes swiftly tedious. You know, <laughs> which is which is this which is the secret of most effects pedals, isn't it? Yes. I can't believe I haven't used this before. This is amazing. Can you hear those sounds? And then an hour later, it's like, yeah. Could you stop pressing that pedal, please? Yeah. Could you just never ever do that again? Would be wonderful. No. I get it. I get it. A cross between a wah wah and a tremolo. That's amazing. Stop. Stop playing it. My, my favorite reaction to something along those lines was uh, uh, someone who, who who literally just said, "So it just does that, huh?" <laughs> Which really sums it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it does. It, it's the that. It's the that pedal. You know, it's the it's the song six in the set. 37 seconds from the end pedal. It's only in the last few years I've really uh, got into using uh, pedals. And to be honest, part of it is just for something to do. But I've got six pedals on my board and I only use two. It's just they're there just so they're there just to have the pretense of being a a musician who knows what he's doing as opposed to as opposed to uh, tune and louder. Are the other pedals that you do not use, like how they have the perfunctory stacks of amps that are just empty inside and just, if, are they actually no, just boxes? No, no, they're not. But I've used um, uh, the, I've got a Electro Harmonics Microsynth, which I've used on a couple of um, Christian fitness songs, but there's absolutely no need for it in Future to the Left. But I, there's just no, I just can't be bothered to take it off my pedal board and I mean, you know, I'd love to be the kind of musician who had a different pedal board for every band. When I say love, I mean deeply fear becoming. Um, <laughs> it's an expensive habit. But, but imagine, though, if you had the money, I mean, Julia was talking about getting a 13 quid shot of Jameson the other week. And I'm like, come on, who pays that for a shot of whiskey? And she's like, well, people who've run out of things to spend money on, I suppose. You know? I suppose so. I mean, it... 
I've, I personally never found that to be a problem myself. There's always, you know, you know plenty of money losing art to uh, devote your your hard yeah. work earnings into. But yeah, well, precisely. I mean, I can't, I can't even imagine that scenario where I'm going. I have nothing to spend money on. I've got now. all this money yeah. and nothing to spend. It on. <laughs> yeah, it's going to have to be whiskey, which tastes odd for an, a ridiculous amount of money. I'm not entirely sure. But um, but yeah, I have no idea how we got to where we've got to now. Uh, oh gosh, good question. Oh, wait, we're talking about guitar pedals and and, and guitar pedal. quick side story. That, I d- that, always, that always plays very well with a radio audience guitar pedal. <laughs> right, exactly. Oh yeah, so let's just we're going to describe this pedal. You're not actually going to hear it, but we're going to tell you what the box looks like, and it's going to be lovely. <laughs> Yeah, great. Visual descriptions of, of, of pedals. A very specialist half hour show every night where somebody talks you through a pedal um, on the radio. It tells you all it. about it, but doesn't actually tell you all about it, where the different components come from, uh, what what the man who made it died of. Well, this know, this is a this is a single source pedal. All of it was organically made on a family farm. And go on, go on, Dan. Tell us where it would be best in our chain. <laughs> To reduce noise and impedance, uh, and, whatever that. And you know what? That show probably does exist, and it's probably more popular than this show. Uh, quite frankly, yeah, yeah. Lots of but lots of guys invest watching it. You know, <laughs> guys invest going too right. You know, just agreeing, just agreeing with things. True, 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 true. Oh, true that. <laughs> I remember when I was a boy, and you only had line boosts. <laughs> Back in my day. <laughs> oh, we didn't have no digital distortion in my day, Kenny. True bypass. We liked it. <laughs> it was a great invention. It was a great invention, I suppose. Uh, the peace and truth of future of the left. I'm just going to bail, bail truce. out of that, by the way. <laughs> the peace and truce. Peace of, and truce. Uh, peace and truce yeah. of future of the left. Uh, yeah. That's, a, that, that's, first of all, a long title, and I thought it was a, an interesting... Play on words, of course. Mm. Uh, and I wonder where the truce comes in, other than a obvious play off of the, uh, the the phrase that. Well, most no, the peace and truce. Yeah, the peace and truce of of God was, you know, in in essence, pre chivalry. The, you know, the idea, basic, you know, basically, a code for knights who weren't exactly the. The, the genuine paladins that history would paint them to be, but just thugs with armor riding around the countryside, taking what they wanted in every kind of sense. So the peace and truce of God was an early attempt to try and give some kind of code set of set of rules to, to those people. Um, there's no obvious parallel um, with, with, with the band, but just generally speaking, it had been, a, a, a rough a rough couple of years and there was a I don't know the the feeling as if after a battle sojourning so, questing if you will no not not quite that that's the thing not quite that not that quite that dramatic you often don't realize something is necessarily that uh difficult i'm not going to say traumatic that's a that's an overstatement but you don't realize that something's difficult and it's taking something out of you necessarily until it's finished challenges perhaps Um, yeah you know there's a certain assessment you make which ends up being yeah a little bit more depressing than you originally thought but uh yeah it's it's a long title It, it was just right you have a record you say some words I'll say some words to Julia and Jack, and they'll go, yeah, that's all right. And then I'll say a title, and they'll go, yeah, that's the title now. And, <laughs> that, and that's the end that's of the discussion. So They're writing some songs. They've got a certain mood. You can't give that mood a name unless unless the music you make is rubbish. You know, it just has a the, – there's a mood which is overriding, pervading everything you're doing, being super pretentious about it. And I go, how about this for a title? And they look at me like, yeah, you know, that was a, that was a clause. It made sense. There was a noun. And you, then you say something else, and it's it's like when a lot of the people who listen to your show be musicians, you're a musician. When you write a song, and it's right, you don't need to pick it apart and work out why it's right. It's just right, and right. then it's right. <laughs> and then it's, oh, that one's right. Brilliant. I can honestly say in all my years of making music, uh, there's only ever been one occasion where somebody sat down and gone, right, 
what is the and obviously the meaning of this word has changed a lot over the years what's the single uh, and <laughs> it, would never, it would never be well by a single i mean they would mean the one they pressed up on seven inch no, you know? no so way it was, yeah, yeah it was it was the single and and sometimes i still find myself caught up in that uh that language we still talk about you know not a single and then always remind ourselves that there's no such thing as a single because you know somebody can play any song off off your record yeah any song can be the deep cut any song can be the single it's it, there's really yeah which is fantastic in uh fantastic in most senses but does steal from bands who were signed to impressionable record labels the chance to amass a collection of records they released you know having seven inch having singles of some of our early records is really it's really great i like owning them so and i didn't have to pay to get them pressed so yeah and that's that's isn't that wonderful i mean i mean you know for all the awful things record companies have done to bands over the years actually printing records for them at time to time despite their dubious artistic quality is actually a pretty good a pretty good rule that they've uh, evolved Absolutely, and it, it's interesting with how much things have changed that there has been that uh, democratization almost of, of the listening audience of you know all these different ways to listen and different abilities to listen at different times and kind of like yeah, not... just it's just whether you you know whether you accept that democracy is always a good thing you know um, there have been uh, plenty of recent plenty of recent incidents which suggest that democracy doesn't doesn't always get you the conclusion that you want well, so, yeah that's the problem with it um, right you know hey i you know i'm i'm a i'm 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 a democratic but you know if it came down to what i wanted democracy is not democracy is not giving me the uh the britain that i want or or the art and music scene that i want democracy is producing something far darker and far more lowbrow than i would assume the th the stupidest racist would even want you know yeah uh, but a, there we are i mean, I mean story of jesus <laughs> like well and, and it's not that we have any you know moral high ground <laughs> no no <laughs> over well, here that, that's what's at stake this year isn't it yeah that's uh... what's at stake like basically we've lost the moral high ground which i believe we had for a long time um because people have, because the empire isn't talked about very much but you know we had that moral high ground but we lost it in in june i mean some people i mean julia went to portugal for three days about a month ago and there was one german man just openly laughing at any british people in the airport you know and, <laughs> and they had the nazis and so, yeah oh that's a harsh yeah, joke they're a laughing stock but if you elect you know if, if you elect yeah. Skeletor, the, the bulbous, the bulbous hate lizard, I can't. Yeah, we at, at the very least, you're embarrassed now. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we we try not to speak his name on the show, of course, because uh, every time anybody does, he gets a massive erection, and that's just not something I'm looking for. Mm. Glenn Danzig. <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, Glenn, well, for Glennis. Glennis. <laughs> Uh, well, but it's 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 interesting that you you know I, I think there's a lot of people that just kind of kind of looked at that decision as just a you know a middle finger in the air uh, or two fingers I suppose for 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 that side uh, uh, and without really thinking about the consequences necessarily or if they were thinking about the consequences they were sort of cherry picking it. I guess a little bit without thinking sure. of any well, nuance. Well, very much so. Well, it was a it was a vote caught up in in an idea of what Britain was, if not what it is, and maybe what it should should have, and the idea that you can be a member of a, an organisation and simply, you know, well, I suppose like you know uh, the Bible, you know, just cherry picking the bits which you it suits you to believe in and forgetting forgetting the bits which you don't believe in um and with i mean brexit is at you know at this stage the main problem with the whole with the whole process is the word brexit is as meaningful as the word shabala do da da you know it has no <laughs> actual meaning what it is at this stage people have voted for a feeling um as opposed to 
an actual thing. So, yeah, it's, it was it was still the most upsetting day that I've I've had living in this country. It was it was really I felt really ashamed to be to be British on that day. Genuinely, yeah, it's a. Uh... Yeah, well, it's, it's like like they like we say in California, it's a harsh toke, you know. <laughs> I I I don't doubt it, um, but yeah, but we, you know we're getting over it. You know the the cowards always end up running away eventually. You know it, it always ends up they always end up scurrying off. That's that's what happens. If there was any consolation, you know, seeing that Boris Johnson did not get to be PM was was you know uh, that, yes, that was nice. Not- He's not a cartoon character. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> yeah, exactly. he's, he's like a floppy-haired, privately educated... I, I, I don't think I can use the language. I'm allowed to use the language on your show, which I would use to... Yeah. I, you know, it's, it's all a game to those, to those people. It's all just a, uh, an upper-class game. Well, and that's so, and that's something that you know. Hopefully, if the hopefully, hopefully there's a hell, so those people can rot in it. But that's <laughs> the only reason to want, actually want to believe in God. Yeah, it's, it's a, like I, like I once said, uh, you know, make me wish I believed in hell so you could go there. But yeah, you know, <sighs> I'm yeah. But the, but but there we are, and that is that is the story of Jesus. <laughs> uh, having little to nothing to do with any of that in any way, shape, mm. or form. Uh, <gasps> creatively, this is the third Christian fitness record in uh, as, as many as many years, right? It, it's been... Uh... Jesus, yeah, the first one came out two years ago, so I'm just trying to do about one a year because there's, there's lots of ideas. Um, and, I mean, if, if I had the time and money, or, and with the emphasis particularly on the second one of those, I could... I mean, you know, I write I write a song a day, so... Um, it's it's easy. The, since I've had the time, since I haven't had a day job for close on two years, I've just been writing, writing nonstop. So apart from this week, where I've, what I've achieved this week is, um, I got an online grocery order and I've charged my phone. Uh, <laughs> it's it's been or it's been disgusting. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Is that all in one day? Don't overachieve, man. It's <laughs> no, it's been a, it's been a. A week of nothingness. I've, I've just come off the back of a lot of work, and I'm usually I usually don't stop. But this week has been a this week has been a chasm of meaning. If I was, you know, my, I've I, you know I've gone for runs, but that's not really that's not really work. Um, I put the bins out on Tuesday. Does that? Uh, sorry, I know it's it's funny when we say bins to Americans, isn't it? So, it, it, it like is. rubbish. Okay. You're taking the rubbish out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but not nearly yeah. so funny as when anybody says that they're taking the piss. That's that's something. Taking that, the piss. Yeah. Um, that's what the janitor does here. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Or when you know we say you know somebody's pissed. Yeah. It doesn't mean they're a bit knocked, a bit <laughs> um yeah. That they were a bit annoyed. It means that they've had too much Cinzano, you know, or the classy drink. Mm. Too much Prosecco in your case. Yeah, ex- ex- exactly. Hey, let's let's exactly let's 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 sort this out. All right, we can we can do it. <laughs> so, as far as the songwriting process, you mentioned last time you were on that you know the future of the left is is more of a much more of a collaborative entity. You know, people were involved mm-hmm. in the process, whereas with Christian Fitness, you're just taking your ideas and, and, and running with them as, as far as the arrangement and, you know, putting things together, have you found that it, that's become easier over time? Are you having to challenge yourself in different ways? Is it still feels like the first time as they, as they say, it's here? just, it's just really easy and it's never been easier. So it's all, I think a question when, when you do anything, whether it's prose, whether it's music, uh, whether it's free, free form parkour sculpture, um, <laughs> wow! <laughs> I, you just you just keep doing it, and sometimes it doesn't work so well. But what, when you when it's not going so well, the the processes are still going. You're still l- learning. You're still rejecting things. And then when it does start going well, just take advantage of every minute, and that's it. That's that's it. Which it's just so easy to do. Like the whole secret is just to do it lots, and to 
to have done it enough to know there are ups and downs in the process. So when you're having the downs, not to get too down, and when you're having the ups, not to uh, not to sit back in celebration a lot, but make sure you take it. For, for myself, we'll have three rehearsals where nothing happens. I have a rehearsal where the first two ideas just not only do they flow, they come right together, they finish, and you just you just take that high and take it for the rest of the rehearsal. And then when it's not going well, sometimes you sit down, you have a bit of cake, and you go home early. Um, and that's that's the secret. It's so much fun writing songs. It's just so much. When you finish writing a song, just that that moment of magic, whether it's in rehearsal or or sat here at home with the two the two cats pleading with me to shut up for a minute. Um, it's just the best feeling. Just the best feeling in the whole world. I don't see how anything could ever come close. So, uh, as far as that goes, I mean, are you? Do you find yourself ever? You know, feeling like okay, I'm a bit bit of a rut right now. Let's do you know this exercise to try to like figure out something, a new way to get there. Or or is is it just kind of you know, hey, striking while the iron's hot and knowing when you're when the iron's not. Uh, it, it 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 is sometimes, but I think you know when certainly for me, I've learned some something recently in the last two years about. I've, I've began to f- f- understand or formalize the way I write songs because of the fact I've been learning to write properly, as in, you know, prose. So it makes you think when you're learning a, a whole way of expressing yourself, or rather, you know, not learning it, but learning the disciplines of it. It's made me approach writing songs in, in a certain way, which in in in, in a few ways... But the main thing it's done, it's shown me how bloody easy it is to write songs. <laughs> and the fact that I wasn't writing more was kind of offensive, I thought. You know, it's really, it's in as much as there are badly written books. I mean, I was written, I was reading something recently where somebody shouted angrily, you know. I mean, just just put the adjectives away, in it. But there's something about writing a book, even a bad one, which which takes up so mental, so much mental space over such a period, just to just to conceive of it. Whereas songs, you can conceive of them in the time it takes to play them, three minutes, and that is the most amazing thing. Uh, the the worst thing, and uh, the worst thing about writing books is sending them to people. And having to wait to hear what they think, whereas you can send an, EP, an MP3 to a person and you can have an answer back in two minutes saying, <laughs> oh, that's right. great. And you can really have, they can, in two minutes, a song can communicate everything it needs to and, every, and everything it ever will. Um, whereas, you know, a book takes nine hours to read or something, and then maybe it takes a few weeks to really reveal what it meant to you. You know, well, and you know that can happen with songs. You know, say with a big Sinead O'Connor ballad, but uh, it's <laughs> it's it's. It took me yeah, eight hours to power through that one. <laughs> <laughs> but it, you know, like I say, dabbling in another in another, for want of a better term, art form has made me appreciate the things about rock music, which are, as I would say, as we would say, a piece of piss. You know, like just. <laughs> So easy. People are like, how is the last Future the Left album written? You're like, oh, it's just, it's hard to describe. It was just a piece of piss. You know, we just went in and we rehearsed and we just wrote loads of songs and it was so easy. And it was so much fun, just fun to play rock music, you know? And I think sometimes that can that can be forgotten about in the, in the whole right, debate about, about art. Especially rock music. I mean, it's art, man. Yeah, you know, just put on my jeans. They're art. It's just art. It just, it just, it's such a natural part of a lot of people's lives right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, you know, a lot of us, we've been doing it for so long. We excrete it, don't we? <laughs> a little, a little bit, and some, <laughs> some of them have different kinds of excretions than others, for sure. <laughs> well, you know, that's. You know, that's that's chapter eight of your autobiography, maybe. 
<laughs> Fantastic. Uh, well, and, <laughs> and I think you brought up a good point, too, because the thing with the song, you can come back to a song years later and find something different in it, even though it's the, exactly the same thing. Maybe you you it just hits you differently. Maybe you there's a part you didn't notice or a turn of phrase or some small thing, but it's the same thing that uh, well, maybe it, maybe it rem, maybe it reminds you of who you were and where you were the last time you heard it. Exactly, you know? it's time travel, precisely. Yeah, and that's. It's there's very few art forms I think that can so consistently do that. I think so, like some of the better art can certainly do that uh, across forms, but uh, music certainly. Of I let, I guess I'm say, what I'm saying is let's hear it for music, huh? How about that? How about that music? Yeah, all right. Take a bow, you many noted Hydra. <laughs> so. Uh, as far as so, and as far as music goes, I don't know if we ever actually have talked about this. And and, and but you're everyone has stuff that they listen to and that they you know uh, get them going down certain paths. Is there any stuff that you're influenced by that you're just like, gosh, that's people don't talk about that enough, or people don't listen to you know such and such enough? Um, I don't know, really. Um, like I, I don't know. It's probably just, you know, the 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 good bands. I think even when you, <laughs> you know, like, we, I like the bands, the good bands, ones, the good bands. You know, what bands do you like? The good ones, <laughs> none of the ones you're pretending to like, right? Um, you know, because you think you probably should. The good, the good bands, the good ones. Black, white, that bit doesn't matter. The good ones, <laughs> you know. <laughs> How about them? Are they good? No. Well, I don't like them, so. It's as simple as that. Prop problem solved. <laughs> Imagine. How would you describe your music in one word? Badly. <laughs> uh, as far as as far as evasive non answers go, that was a pretty good one, I must say. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. Um, no, this you know things. Uh, I, I mean, I could pull up my iTunes. I don't. I don't know. Thing is, I was I was mixing an album until a week and a half ago, so. The last the bloody last thing, thing I want to right. do is listen to any music after saying vocals up, vocals down for four and a half days. You just you're just over it. Um, just you know, just all the you know all the good songs. Bit of bit of uh, bit of birthday party. Bit of uh, talking heads. Um, I listened to I can't remember. There's a band called Girl Band. I listened to a little bit of that. That was all right. Yeah. Um, all the all the bands, all the good ones. Just the good ones, yeah. Those ones. Of course, fair, fair. yeah. None of the bad ones. If you think of one of those bad bands, just I don't like them. And the thing I don't like about them is they're bad. <laughs> right. If they were good, maybe you'd like them. If they were good, I'd, I'd be all over them. I'd be <laughs> singing their praises from the rooftops. Oh, I, that band is so good. Go and see them, but they're not. They're bad, so I don't like them. The end. And a fine story it was, truly. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I just feel as if I've really, really nutted out my thought processes there. <laughs> it's very good. It's excellent. Right. Uh, so, song titles. Are there, is there like a bin? Of, and I'm noticing I'm using the word bin for you specifically. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. I feel as if you're reaching out to me across across the sea. Yeah, a, a bin of rejected song titles. Is there just like a uh... <laughs> Like, like either ones that just were, were too much, uh, too little, or just didn't hit right. That you know, there is is there like a a, a spreadsheet or a word document somewhere, or they just often do the ether. Not, there's not, and they always just happen at the you know, with with the odd exception, they just happen at the last minute. You just go, ah, oh, that's that's the right title for that. It's that's just it. I mean, I I think actually for a change. I think a lot of the song titles for the songs on this album, they, 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 they were a song, and then I came up with the title, and then ingeniously decided to sing the title at the end. Just, <laughs> just because I couldn't be bothered to write any more lyrics, because between um, the Future the Left album earlier this year, this album this year, and the other uh, Christian Fitness album last year, and having to relearn all the McCluskey songs... I was just so over and and writing, trying to write a book at the same time. I was so down on new words, 
I just wanted words to stop. I had to remember. At one stage, I had something like 40, 43 songs in my head. And, I'm, you know, I'm the singer in a rock band. That's, you're not meant to remember 43 songs. <laughs> Unless, you, I guess, you're Bruce Springsteen, you know, and you've got to... You've got to age through one of his concerts. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, hey, there's, there's, there's always, you know, there's always somebody here that uh, he has the best words. I'm, I'm not sure if you heard about it over there, but he, he has the best words, such as Bigly. Bigly is one of my favorites. Again, name we still don't speak, but no, no, uh, I don't. So, um, yeah. the uh, you mentioned the McCluskey stuff. Now that that's something that's a band that means a lot to a lot of people, even though a lot of them perhaps were not around for the first go-round. And uh-uh. I think it was last, uh, maybe it's time before last when we talked. It all runs together at this point, truly. <laughs> yes, yes, it does. Uh, you mentioned that you know, you were getting back together to do the McCluskey songs for a charity event, and it seems like there's been, you know, as it turns out, there's there's more charitable need that's out there. And uh, it's it's something there there has been more uh, McCluskey. Can we call them incursions? Is that what we should, can call them? You can you, you can call them you can call them whatever you want, darling. Um, they we did the two for a venue called Le Pub to keep that, and then we did uh, one uh, for a venue called the Buffalo Bar where it was closing down and the staff weren't getting any money, so we did one for them. And then we did then we did one last summer for ourselves to make some money from it, and then later on <laughs> last December we did a, sh- a show for uh, cancer research in London and raised quite a lot of money. So we raised a lot of money. You know, we raised. I mean, I, I wouldn't be crass enough to give figures, but it was a lot, a lot more money for for charity than we raised for ourselves. Uh, but it was nice to do one show for that band from which I actually got money, because until that day, the most money I'd ever made from McCluskey was, as I'm sure I've told you before, when our flight to uh, Sydney got, uh, sorry, to Los Angeles on the way to Sydney got. Uh, it was full, and they bumped us, and they gave us 150 pounds each to spend in the airport. And that was my best paying day in that band <laughs> until, until I did that show. So you know what? <laughs> if, somebody, if somebody isn't comfortable with me taking the money for that show, which wasn't a huge amount of money, then I will fight them in a bear pit. And I don't believe in fate, but just the right, you know, the righteousness of the molecules of the earth would mean that I'd win. Yeah, I mean, gosh, that's a... <laughs> I, I, I feel that that's a story that is unfortunately... You know, more uh, common than 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 we would all like yeah. to admit. Because as as we've often mentioned, you can't eat prestige, unfortunately. You, you can't eat prestige, but you know, my word, it, it looks marvelous when you're walking into a venue which has thirty three people in it. <laughs> there was, there was a, yeah. Just how it how it shines off the epaulets. Uh, there was there was a a bit <clears throat> some time back for not really of course <laughs> of course uh, Buzz Osborne went to uh, go buy a house and he was uh, going to make the down payment with a uh, cred he had cred in a uh, he had favorable magazine reviews. I don't know what the hell happened there. Let's it's probably the uh, it's probably the FBI. That was that was. I think that was the long story. Police uh, getting in after me for for. <laughs> yeah, anecdote, anecdote. It's gonna name drop in a minute. If, if only there was that kind of secret police, perhaps in real life, to to kind of lock down up, upon the uh, overly loquacious and long winded. As long as they're polite and brief themselves, then why why the hell not? Uh, and the point of that story is that he, when he went, made gave the down payment. He had favorable magazine reviews. He, he, was, he was paying with cred. Is, is the point of that story? So paying with cred. Yeah, I wish I I could. I mean, I haven't got a lot of that, but I've got some. So maybe I could come up with a payment plan with my landlord. We're we're moving to London very soon for Julia's job, and um, oh, really. Uh, yeah, so that's going to be quite an adventure. I mean, you know, it's only it's only the the, the, the stupidest of dicks. And move, you're meant to move away from London when you're 41, not to London. So I'm totally getting that wrong. But these things happen for a reason. What the reason is, 
I have no idea, but there is a reason nonetheless. Sure. And I mean, at, at least you're still in a situation where, you know, it's a major metropolitan area. <laughs> like it's, they... a major, it's a major metropolitan area. Yes. Yeah, it's, uh, it's quite a, it's quite a place, London. It's it's quite an incredible place. Um, but it's usually good to really good to go, but also really good to leave. So um, I'm going to have to get used to not doing the second one of those things. <laughs> and it's well, and so that's interesting because for you know for a lot of folks out here at least, you know the only thing they really know from Cardiff is your bands and yourself. And other than that, they they don't think much of the. It's not that they don't think much of the Welsh; is that we never really <laughs> think of the Welsh at all. <laughs> no, um, uh, well, that's it's it's understandable to a degree. I mean, I'm not Welsh myself, but having lived here for a long time, I have a, a fondness for it. Um, and fondness is probably. That probably just about sums it up. Um, but no, I mean, you know, Roald Dahl was from Cardiff. Um, mm. But uh, Shirley Bassey is from Cardiff. Um, Anthony Hopkins is Welsh. But apart from that, I'm really struggling. There was some really tenuous link the Welsh went for years ago where they were saying that Bob Marley was Welsh because of some kind of... What? Uh, something to do. They weren't actually saying it. They just had a... They went through a, a phase of trying to get lots of were they proving trying? when people had Welsh ancestry, like Kylie Minogue or people like that, in order to um, to boost the I, I don't know I guess the self esteem of the nation. But really, for the most part, I think it just puzzled people. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Hornless unicorn in the chat box saying uh, they weren't saying it, but were they implying it? Perhaps was that what they were doing? I think I, I, I really don't know what was happening, but it was very sweet in a way. Some it people was, have uh, said identity. We we just like to address the the you know the ongoing rumor that is out there. <laughs> Bob Marley is from Cardiff. Yeah, this, this this rumor, which is really refuses taken to die, root, <laughs> it really does taking root to the bottom of the, and the tree of uh, popular culture, and it's destroying it from within, isn't it? This this insidious lie, or is it a lie? Got to ask the question. If you don't ask the question, you don't you don't get the answer. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, so, uh, having little to do with Bob Marley's uh, potential Welsh ancestry. Uh, we have a lineup shift with Future Left, right? I think Jimmy Jimmy was playing with you and is now not. Is that correct? Am I am I up to yeah, speed on that? He's, he's not he's not playing with us anymore. But for all intents and purposes, we're we're a, a three piece at the minute. And so far, we've been helped out by our friend Ian, who plays in the band Art Brute. Okay, and is that? I mean, I, I assume that's not needlessly acrimonious or anything along those lines. Uh, you know, it's just the way these things go, you know, just, it just needed to, it just needed to happen and it happened. So, you know, that's the only, it's the only real way to look at it. Um, it, and the new album is, is good. I enjoyed all the music we made with them. There's no problems with it. Um, I like, really like both of those records. The second one's probably more successful because it's a bit more coherent in sound, but um, yeah, there's no 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 regrets musically whatsoever. It's all it's all good, and the well, w with what we wrote for the fifth record and what we're writing now for the sixth, somebody threw a load of money at us. We could go in and make another one in a couple of months, um, even though we, generally speaking, only get to rehearse every couple of weeks. It's just a very uh, it's a very fruitful period for, for writing. And it's, it's felt like that for years. I remember finding it very difficult uh, twice, once just before McCluskey's third album, then just before uh, the Future the Left second record travels, which is probably the best um, thought of, I suppose, but that was really difficult to write. And there's only 12 songs in the album, and we only wrote 12 songs, which is really unusual for us, you know? Um, it was difficult. It felt... When we were making the album, it felt scraped together. It doesn't sound it, um, but the last few years have just been amazing for just writing and enjoying write mu rock music, just being stood in a room and trying ideas. I mean, sometimes it doesn't work, like I was saying earlier, but it's 
been working a lot recently, so uh, just just embrace it and and move on. Yeah, nothing wrong with that spend, at all. <laughs> yeah, spend more time worrying about whether you need to wear, wear a hat or not, you know, on the way to rehearsal. And if you don't, just go bareheaded. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's. What? Sorry, yeah, what? that was so. That wasn't even pseudo wise, was it? It was just pseudo. <laughs> just, uh, just, just say, just say two things. I've just got to get a bottle of. <laughs> well, and I think that that easily could be dialogue from uh, you know the straight story or something along those lines. Something from uh, from the David Lynch canon. David sure. Lynch. I've got to try Twin Peaks again because I um I uh, watched Twin Peaks when I was in school and I thought it was a load of. I don't, I don't know what language I can use. We didn't talk about this before the show. You, 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 um, you can use the big boy curse words. It's it's alright. I know. I don't. I, I just. I I thought Twin Peaks when I was when it was broadcast. I can't remember what age I would have been then. Fourteen or fifteen. I just thought it was a load of cock. So <laughs> I can't. I can't. I, I mean, I have to watch it again as an adult. I mean, you know, I remember seeing the Larry Sanders show when I was. In college, the odd episode, and going, yeah, well, whatever, <laughs> you know. But then seeing it years later in sequence and thinking it was you the funniest it, yeah. thing ever. Um, so maybe I need to. But I just remember watching Twin Peaks, going, he's just throwing that dwarf in because he doesn't know what else to do. Let's have a dwarf. Let's have a dream <laughs> series dwarf. Let's have a dream sequence dwarf because otherwise, this coherent, this incoherent rubbish will will it'll be clear. But, you know, but the, well, maybe that's just me. like I say. These are my recollections of being a teenager, so I'm I'm perfectly prepared to to try it again. You know. Well, I I will tell you that you know if you need to tie a narrative together, nothing like a dwarf. <laughs> There's nothing in like a, a dream dwarf. sequence, though, specifically, or maybe walking backwards, or eating an apple and looking suggestive, but sat on a pony, or on a swing or pointing at a heap of M&M &M records or, you know, kissing a wall in slow motion, those things make you go, why, what, what could that possibly mean? And then we're back with another two dimensional character saying some unconvincing dialogue. <laughs> I think, I think you should give it another look, especially the first yeah, season. Okay. Yeah. I, well, Hey, I'm going to, and I retract the four minutes of criticism <laughs> I just gave a show I saw for two episodes 27 years ago. Uh, it, it, it's, I mean, there, there's a unique David Lynch thing that quite often is parodied <laughs> very effectively because it is such a d distinct and unique thing that you kind of have to be willing to accept that. Uh, and, you know, he has a certain thing where, like, it, it, he goes for feelings and mood sometimes <laughs> – over narrative and that's a weird yeah. show because it was it was since it was a network tv show you know it, it was melding together these different worlds the first season is fantastic i think the second season is good it's not as good uh but it's worth watching and, and uh, you know it's david lynch is something that I've, i don't evangelize to everyone for sure but i think you would get something out of it now well we we shall see and my enjoyment of it will then inform my value of you as a character. <laughs> yeah, no pressure, right? <laughs> no, no, no pressure. I like it when, um, when, when people say, "Oh, you know, you never, you don't judge a person by their friends." You're like, "Of course, of course, you do." What kind of person doesn't judge a person by? It's like never judge a book by its cover. Often, ju judge a book by its cover. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, don't get. I, there are certain films by Lynch that I'm just like, it's. I'm not a main person hey, of the thing. Hey, where it's. I'm gonna. I'm gonna start. I'll start with Twin Peaks. I'll. I'll take notes of the things I don't like, um, and you'll get a. You'll get a full report. Okay. I will spare. I will spare no feelings. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. I. I. I appreciate the diligence and and for the homework of it. <laughs> for yeah, sure. thank you, thank you. Well, you know, if I'm going to put in the hours, I deserve, I deserve reward. <laughs> well, and you know, th there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of film references, uh, playfully, I, I would say, in especially the future of the left stuff, that, you know, uh, as of as a for instance, of course, you know, Rob the RoboCop four, <laughs> fuck off RoboCop, which is. Uh, 
a brilliant piece of elegant vulgarity, if ever there was one. Uh, you yeah, are... I, I, I had another email the other week about that, some guy saying, what's your problem with action films? Like, the song is, the song is literal, you know. Right. Um, I mean, you know, it's just, I don't know. It's difficult for some people, isn't it? It's, it's difficult that the world isn't constructed exactly around their full thoughts. Um, <laughs> imagine, though, if... Because it's even slightly weird for somebody in, in my position who doesn't make anything really approaching a proper living from it or anything. Imagine for, for those bigger artists, for want of a better term in most cases, there's going to be some proper, obsessive, weird people out there. You know, oh, like course, I've had yeah. some slightly weird people, but they've been pretty low rent as a good, no offense to them. In <laughs> but, but they've only been a bit crazy. Like, like they were training a crazy or, you know, it was a government sponsored course. To keep, you know, keep kids from stealing car stereos or something. Um, um, but when you see how obsessed people get with people who are big stars, who they thought are stars, that must be, that must be really scary to be on the, the other side of. It must be really, really odd. I had a, a, an email years ago um, about there's a really because McCluskey's first album is dog shit. It's awful, and <laughs> but there's a song in it called "She Come in Pieces," right? And I got an email from. It's a very long story, but some guy had been um, impersonating me. I mean, who would impersonate me? I mean, nobody had heard of us on this uh, web, on this uh, message board for TJ's, which is this allegedly famous venue in, in Newport. Um, and um, he was impersonating me on there, like offering people out for fights and stuff. Certainly at that time in my life, I was getting in far too many fights without some some guy actively impersonating me and um, even without me having to do anything with it. But anyway, I ended up finding out, and he ended up emailing me to apologize and asking me if a song, the song She Come In Pieces, was written about, he was sure that the song was written about his girlfriend who died in the Potter's Bar um, train crash, which was a, a train crash in Britain in the <laughs> wow. 90s. And um, I'm like, no, it's, she come in pieces. It's not like, you know, in literal pieces. This is somebody who comes to you emotionally in pieces and he just he wouldn't accept it and that was that's probably that's the weirdest you know because mostly with us people aren't necessarily huge fans they just mispronounce the band names that's, that's about as <laughs> right, right. you get or tell you or tell you they're scottish <laughs> hey you guys welsh because i'm scottish i'm like yeah you got that uh Kilmarnock Brogue, I hear. Fucking. Well, and, and, and yeah, if you think about, so on that level with the, you know, low rent, petty, uh, nuanceless stalkers, can you imagine yeah. if you were like Radiohead or something along those lines? Radiohead or, 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 or Stephen Albini or, uh, y- you know, some of, anybody above anybody who has this cod mythical status must be weird, you know? Must be must be weird. Yeah, people establishing I, I, deep, I, deep I, connections I, that, like, maybe are completely inaccurate. I, oh, but, yeah, but it's weird. Like, I don't look at... When I was younger in bands, I used to look at message boards, and uh, but now you, you never do it, because I know I'd look at a, a message board and see something somebody had written about me. And I, knew, I know if I see it, I'd make it my life's mission to track them down and kill them. And I just can't be doing that. I just, for lots of reasons, I want, um, I have a very beautiful wife. Um, I want to have a family. I can't be in prison for murder. It's it's just not the done thing. Um, it's, a, it's a shame, really. But uh, but I just can't look. Well, it's, it's so weird when people um, psychoanalyze you um, in, in, about songs and things. And talking to friends who are, are writers, they say it's, it's even it's even worse when you're a writer. The way people will psychoanalyze. I mean, not everybody, but certainly when people reach a certain level, I suppose, of fame. I don't know. They become public property in a sense. In a sense, yeah, they enter the public. I don't think that's ever happened. I don't think that's ever even like got close to happening with anything I've ever been involved with. So maybe that's actually the best thing 
maybe at the perfect level. Yeah, and it's almost like when you enter the public consciousness that way, then there's certain, you know, you, you almost lack the ability or uh, to control what your image is to a certain degree. People are just going to take whatever they take away from it, and it may have nothing to do with the actual person, but there's the idea of the person. Well, absolutely, because uh, one one thing I um, one thing I love about uh, being in a, a touring band, um, I, and I only like it when I'm in a touring band. I like if I go out, say, we, if we just go out for a drink around here, I don't want anybody to notice me except for the people I'm out for a drink with. Right, it's in, quite important to me psychologically. I'm quite a shy person, but I love being at one of our gigs. And I love talking to people and not having to introduce myself. That is amazing. I can't tell you how much time that saves you in your <laughs> life. <laughs> you can get right to the good stuff, yeah, to a certain degree. But you can. Right? You yeah. can. They, they want to say something usually, and they say it, and sometimes it's, what's your guitar tuning? But, and, you know, I guess it's <laughs> a valid, it's a, when I say sometimes, it's, it's, it's a, lot of, a lot of the time. Um, and... But it's it's amazing not to have to do that. Oh, what do you? It's not like that conversation when you start a job. The the one every musician's had, even if somebody's had a few releases. That oh, here yeah, you're in a band. Oh, yeah. Oh, what's it called? You won't have heard of it. No, right. what's it called? I know a lot of stuff. No, you really you won't. Have, you won't no, have heard no, it. You you won't have heard no, this. Come on, tell me. I know a lot of stuff. You know, my brother's really into local bands, especially local bands. Tell me what's it called? Oh, fucking all right. It's called Future to the Left. Never heard of you. <laughs> so, I know, I know, yeah, I know you haven't. I know, and yeah, and like every, do you need a manager? Oh. Yeah, and then only, and, and then you're in, only you're one in with that. a normal size, only one with a normal size forehead, please. please. <laughs> And that's the thing is that at that point, then you're in that, and they know. So then, hey, you gotta let me know when you gig next. Yeah, I, I won't. Yeah, I won't be doing no, that. No, I don't. Thank you. I don't want. To, no, but then again, you meet people who are genuinely want to be supportive, then hear your music and are horrified. You know, <laughs> and they look at you a different way. Maybe they side eye you or, or avoid eye contact altogether. Well, I remember being in my early twenties and meeting girls in work because you know most people meet the people the, of the opposite or same sex, they rub against it in work because when you meet, it's when you meet people and, you know, you'd be getting on quite well and go, ah, oh, you're playing on Friday. I'll come to that. I'm like, can we go out before the, the music? Can we, can we, you know, go out and have some food and establish, establish that we actually have a human connection before you see me. Right screaming at people and threatening to eviscerate people from the stage and, and infer whatever you're going to infer from that as a as a person's character based on mm. that that behavior yeah but i remember you know you'd get people going oh yeah you're very angry on stage aren't you i don't want to do that voice that's a that's horrendous oh you're very angry on stage aren't you and i'd go um no it's not really anger i'm really enjoying myself <laughs> oh you don't look like you're enjoying yourself right oh, i i i am is it, you know, is it a catharsis? You're like, no, it's not a catharsis. No, it's just loads of fun. Oh, okay. Anyway. Are no, you I sure you're be... not angry? <laughs> Are you <Yeah>. sure? <laughs> you sure you're not angry? I'm like, what? Do you think I'm making an appointment every I'm night? I'm getting angry get now angry? talking to you, but... <laughs> do, you, do you think I'm making an appointment every night to be angry? I go on stage to pick up a guitar and go, have this, you twats. <laughs> Jesus, you know, but... You know, that's that's the whole plan. That's the beginning and the end of it. <laughs> oh, I, I had a really bad summer holiday when I was 12. I must sing about it to this crowd of strangers. What? One of your business. I, and that's what comes down to the, the com people completely misunderstanding, not only like a lack of nuance, but just that anything could be allegory or, you know, <laughs> be able to just, any, you... be anything other than strictly what it is in a very literal interpretation. Or just fun. I mean, some people I know, some people I've been in bands with, they think that they write better when everything is shit. Uh, they write, they come up with better art. For me, that is nonsense. Yeah, not me, man. <laughs> not at and all. You've got, you've, got, you've got actual problems if you think that's the case. It, like, for me, all of my best songs are being written when I'm happy. Um, when I'm sad, I just write turgid rubbish. Um, and... 
well, I mean, the McCluskey song, She Will Only Bring You Happiness, was because a guy I knew who was in a band who were pretty successful at the time, um, he, I was starting to see a, a girl, and he said, and it was meant to be a warning, he was like, careful, she will only bring you happiness. And his implication being, you'll never write another good song. Wow. And, you know, you're like, oh, mate, you've just got this the wrong way around. Well, no, you haven't even got it the wrong way around. You've put in this tortured artist thing a band a, a guy i was in a band with he uh you know he, he was obsessed with the fact that he wrote better songs when we didn't have any money and he had to work all night in a 24-hour like service station garage i think that's such a shame i write better songs when i have a lie in i have some nice chicken and i'm looking forward to I'm looking forward to hanging out with the cats later. That, right. they, that's the perfect writing conditions for me. Yeah, if, you, if you're sitting there like overwhelmed by, oh, how are we going to pay the bills? Or how are we going to, you know, oh, God. I mean, like, gosh, I can't, couldn't even think of being creative. All my attention or... goes on how I'm going to pay the bills. <laughs> right, exactly. All my attention goes on, yeah, you know, that, that, that the terrible everyday. Um, everyday problem you've got to deal with but you know different different captains for different boats i suppose some people like the so, some people like the idea of being artists they like the idea of suffering i suppose i mean i, I was like that once it's called being a teenager <laughs> you grew out of it exactly yeah yeah you know puberty happened there was some hormonal stuff and then after a while you're like oh i see yeah it's a waste of time thank god for that <laughs> and and some people never really advance beyond that, I suppose. So, uh. no, and you know, good luck to them. If, as long as they're as long as they're happy in their own melodramatic way, I think I think it's lovely. So, you know, we were talking a little bit about you know things getting like more uh, uh, heated or or passionate at at shows. Something I've noticed when when I've seen you play over the years is that. Uh, I, you, you're very, some people are very some bands are are not very quick on stage with uh, s snappy banter or retorts but i mean mm. gosh there's been times that it almost seems like there could be stand up sets like between songs uh, you know in, in a certain way and i wonder if that does that ever encourage people that think they're funny who are some of the most dangerous mm. people in the world of course well it's it spoils about 1 in 100 shows it just does there's, a, but like with anything, over time you learn the warning signs and how to get rid of it. Like we had one show in Sydney about uh, five or six years ago, which was just totally spoiled by a consistent heckler. And you know what? It, for the first half of the show, it was genuinely very funny, and it would have improved the experience of anybody there just to. But it just kept going and going. And right. I know now it reaches a certain stage and you or security either just remove them and that's it. You get to that stage where you're like, okay, I'm going to come down there and I'm going to give you the money for your ticket, but you're leaving now. That's it. Yeah. That, that, that's it. Like, you know, that's it. I mean, I'm talking about 15 minutes of just screaming on, you know, just – the the worst um but i learned, I learned a lesson that night and that's that's never that's never happened again um and obviously you've got a guitar and a pa so it's very easy to just cut somebody off <laughs> right <laughs> it's very easy to just cut just this this was a different situation because australian shows are very, are very special to us um the reactions we get and the genuinely funny interaction. I mean, occasionally you'll get a night where they're all really, really fucking pissed, and they'll all be shouting out sports statistics or something, and, <laughs> wow. you know, it's, it's awful. <laughs> but in general, Australian crowds interact in a superb way. Um, I, I think it's a little bit more natural for them to react with us than it is, say, with American crowds. Because I think American crowds... And they're fantastic, don't get me wrong. It's sometimes really funny. Sometimes they're so... Uh, it depends on the city. But in some cities where maybe they don't get a lot of bands through, um, they're so charmed by the British accent that 
it's they don't know what to say, you know? Right, and that's that kind of like, oh, it's a it's a novelty. It's a it's new. There's something new. I remember, I remember getting a, a, an email from a guy who saw us in Boston, and he said, I really enjoyed the show, but my girlfriend got really uh, pissy because uh, she turned to me at one stage and said, not everything's funny if you say it in a British accent, you know? <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, but but it is when I do it. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, just, it was a really good moment because I know what she means, but she still needs to line up a little bit, you know. But I know, I know what she, I know what she means. Sometimes you feel as if you could go on stage and go, "Tally ho, you old dogs!" And I remember being in Birmingham, Alabama, and asking if I could, you know, using the correct jargon of the area, asking if I could use the bathroom, and just ending up with just these five people just around me going, "Say toilet," <laughs> just being so, just being so excited by that whereas obviously you don't get that in LA or San Francisco or or New York um, and it just reminds you that it reminds you that it's really really difficult to talk about the US as as a country it's as a regional whole sure yeah yeah I mean it's, it's all it's all it's also it's yeah but anyway we don't need to we don't need to get into that no because that, but 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 it, but it is true it's, it's a notable thing I mean even speaking for myself you know being a born and raised Californian and you know go around to different parts of the country you know people in the in the deep south are just uh, delighted beyond belief when you know you, you put a dude in as a rejoinder or something along those lines or, or just a placeholder which is such a common thing in California and you don't even think about and then you're like oh of course you're thinking of uh, you know Bill and Ted or something along those lines now and it's it's a novelty to you mm. yeah whereas in, in in you know a city when you're trained to be so cynical particularly in a say a New York or a London uh, where you hear it you hear it all I mean you hear accents from everywhere in the world in London and you know if you're in New York where I have admittedly haven't been for a few years you hear a lot of British accents you know all all over the place so it just becomes a it's more common yeah 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 absolutely more common and again I can't remember how we got there you know you're seeing a pattern image <laughs> people live everywhere man people live everywhere people live everywhere and i've and statistically there's the same amount of dickheads everywhere in the world it's, it's true <laughs> they are no matter what their accents it's true there are there are uh, arab dickheads there are romanian dickheads there are british dickheads there are french dickheads there are dickheads everywhere it's, it's about it's about 16 percent. 16 percent dickhead but you know as far as averages go just, that's of egregious dickheadery. The problem is, though, they make so much noise that they are they exaggerate their mass. That's right. a nice way, nice way of putting it. Um, and it's time we. I reckon if we took those dickheads out, we'd still be left with the more covert racism and sexism. Sure. But I think if we took those dickheads out, we could get rid of a hell of a lot of both of those things. I agree. I. I, in my experience, you see, they don't specialize. Um, the you know your real your real idiot racists don't tend to be really progressive on women's or, or gay rights. Um, it tends to be it tends to be a threefer, doesn't it? It does so, indeed. Yeah, I, they they go hand so in hand. I'd say we just start getting these people and you know not 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 killing them, but just subjecting them to. To even more boredom than they already have in their lives. <laughs> Maybe uh, force them to watch some incredibly dreadful TV comedy or something for the for the end of their days. Uh, something which just got voted over here the best the best comedy ever. It's called Mrs. Brown's Boys, and it's it's so unfunny. It's like they've made it that unfunny for a bet. It's, <laughs> right, like it's a challenge. <laughs> no. But it's a proper like, I mean, it's what, it's what you could really unselfconsciously call Brexit comedy oh, because no. it's, it's it's made it's made for people who fear who fear that the world is changing, who hate the fact that you can't just say gay all the time when you don't like something. They hate it. Right, right. Um, 
you know, hate it. And I mean, you know, for me, that that would be an example of how something is ridiculously badly titled as political correctness can work. I was probably when I was in my twenties a little bit guilty of throwing that word around like it was confetti, and I didn't mean it in a in any kind of insulting way, but it does make you think, you know, sometimes about the words you use and. I, th- I think that can only be a, a, a healthy thing in general, as long as people aren't being dicks about it. Well, there, there's a, a Google plugin I know that automatically changes utterances of political correctness to treating people with respect, which is yeah, makes, yeah. makes for some very funny headlines, <laughs> for mm. sure. And it, it's one of those things that, you know, language being what language is, it's mutable and changeable and, you know, definitions and change things fall in and out of fashion but it, it is interesting to see and yeah you know there there are two sides of it i the whole like the idea like in here here in the u.s you have comedians that you know they won't play colleges anymore because everyone is you know so concerned about hearing any, anything that's a that isn't a view that completely reflects their identity and their their politics that they either storm out or like boo them off the stage but that's those are extreme examples and i feel like that's not the point i mean the, the point well, is... it's, it, well, the, the, the whole point with i think what you're saying is that's not really how people are living right they are the, the you know that's the, the, the real policy or real the real way you act and for example being the, there's value in saying you're a feminist if you're in a certain crowd i suppose but um, there's more value in just treating people with with respect and equality. Um, but yeah, I I I I, I don't know. Um, I'm I'm not really involved in any in any colleges in in any way. I guess if I was, maybe that would be more be more of an issue. I mean, again, it's it's the kind of situation where you can well, in in essence, every, everybody is is right. I get really sick of reading anything online. I, I'm I generally will disagree with anything anybody says just out of just just Sport. out of the fun of having a debate. I mean, it's a good start point, but I, I hate seeing things posted and somebody will maybe retweet something and say nailed it. Um it's very difficult to nail a complex situation in one perspective or with one anecdote. Right. I think of the best at best, you can help to put something in perspective or add to the debate. At worst, you can confuse the debate. Um, you know, an example, a very good friend of mine is going through a situation where if his brain was wired in a different way, he'd be more than justified in becoming one of those horrendous men's rights activists. Oh, right. Yeah, but, but if his brain was wired in a certain way, he could easily be there, and anybody sure. talking to him on an individual basis would be more than convinced of the, the the veracity of his cause. But he's an intelligent enough person to know that his experience isn't every experience, um, and that there's there's a good there's a good reason why he, he he's not part of an oppressed minority, um, but. Again, that that takes it. It's very difficult to allow. Uh, it's well, it's very easy, sorry, to allow our own experiences to dictate a whole and I a whole view of the world. And I understand it, though. I mean, you look at you, you look a lot of the the triggering debates on colleges. You are talking about people who've been through some horrible experiences. Some of it's real trauma. Yeah, of course. Yeah, real trauma. And you can understand why they're so upset. And I can't even begin to relate about that. But not saying those words doesn't stop those things existing in the world. Um, and, yeah, I mean, it's a it's a situation in which nobody nobody wins because... Of course, you want free debate, but you don't want people needlessly, needlessly offended. When I was growing up, because of something which happened in our family, there'd be a certain. My mother used to watch a uh, a television show uh, called Casualty, which is like a uh, you know an emergency room drama, which ran for, or is still running. Maybe it's been going for twenty five years. Um, and like with any drama like that, it's a question of 
you see the little the people going about their lives at the start and you're like oh which one's going to fall off a bridge you know which one's going to get speared which one's going to have a stroke and be you know rushed to this hospital just working out which one of the characters is actually going to come to harm um but because of this situation if a particular thing happened uh particularly to do with the heart a family member would just walk out of the room you know so it got to the stage where we'd have to record it and check that that didn't happen in the show so i mean you know the, uh, literally a, a trigger warning right you know so yeah. i understand it but when the, when they saw it they simply had to deal with it and walk on with their lives they weren't they weren't protected from that that very common thing which happens to to people for the rest of their lives there was a small painful reminder all the time so i understand fully um the concept of it you know um and how important i have seen how it, important it can be but yeah it's really uh it's really difficult not to make everybody everybody happy at the same time isn't it <gasps> well yeah and, and... <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean that to sound um, like like glib or whatever. No, it's, no, I, I, I know what you're you saying. Know, sometimes you can step back from watching people argue, usually just accepting the evidence which suits them and not going back and just say, oh, I wish everybody could be just happy. <laughs> that would be really nice. Well, and, and it's it's something where it shouldn't take that much effort to kind of get into the mindset of a you know a Brexit voter or a, a Trump supporter along those same lines of, of course they're, they're pissed and they've found in, they have people providing simple solutions to complex problems that aren't the actual solution, but make them feel better and that yeah. something is happening. So it's, 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 it othering is a very interesting. I mean, it's, it's certainly it's happened over the years. I think it's easier to do now than it ever was before. And I think that's incredibly dangerous. And I mean, it all comes down to the fact that I've said over and over again, critical thinking should be taught up and down every every school at every level. <laughs> Just mm. to have people question more. If people questioned more, then I think we, we would have far fewer problems. Uh, jerks will still be jerks, let's be clear. But they would be... Well, no, this is what I was saying earlier about that percentage of dickheads. You know, we, if we if we begin to... I mean, if we if we begin to root those people out and put them into to boring world, um, well, they just listen to each other. Maybe yeah, that's that's torture um, enough. <laughs> listen, listen, listen to each other. I mean, if you hear, I mean, just some nice, some nice entertain. Rush Limbaugh is at least he's entertaining, isn't he? Just to hear him get angry about nothing at times. <laughs> right, I mean, manufacturing. You know, not consent, but manufacturing fury. <laughs> Man manufacturing it for money and but imagine waking up every morning and being him and going oh no i'm me i'm i'm furious i'm my i've got a bad knee it's the fault of a mexican you know <laughs> um, right right you know i oh, my, my piss is too yellow Fucking liberals <laughs> still it's happening it's, it's happening liberal over conspiracy. here it's happening over here with not the left, with some of the left. And obviously it's happened over there for, uh, f you know, from the right for years. But, and it, again, it sounds like a, a real hot take of a, of a fucking comment. But the idea that the idea that the word liberal can be used as an insult. Oh, yeah. Is, is a, you know, it, it's astonishing. It's, if, if you want to call somebody a leftist, I still think you sound... Uh, I th still think like you sound like you've got problems, but I at least understand what you mean by that. You're criticizing somebody on the basis of what is perceived to be an extremity of their political thought. But calling somebody a liberal, implying that they will, you know, if we're looking at not just the diction dictionary definition, but what I believe a lot of people who consider themselves liberal, I know not liberals, but liberal in character, to listen to all of the arguments before they make their mind up. Right, and, and that's somehow an insult. Like, that's some, something to be that taken. Is an insult. <laughs> that is that. Is, see, it's not an insult, and when you use it as an insult, you're revealing so much about yourself that at that stage, you don't have anything left to say, and it's time that you stopped existing. Yeah, and, and I think that's something that, you know, here in America, 
was a- allowed to happen. That was definitely something. There was forethought behind it. You know, the, there was a concerted effort th- with the Overton window to kind of push forward that certain ideas should be made to seem toxic. And mm-hmm. without pushback, it can be successful, especially when you have <laughs> basically borderline active propaganda arms pushing your message forward. Uh, but it doesn't make it right. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't make it fair yeah. that you do that. No, it's. but the thing is, though, you're always counting on the intelligence of of the audience, aren't you? I mean, if I, growing up, if I watched the BBC, I would assume a slight left-wing bias. I just would, but as Colbert said, reality has a left-wing bias. Um, <laughs> well, I'd watch it and I'd, I'd read, you know, I'd watch the news knowing that. Nobody ever sat down to me. As a, as a child or whatever, and said, you do know the BBC is, like a lot of the largely creative arts, is more inclined to the left than the right. Nobody had to do that, because as a as a citizen of Earth, with the faculties of looking and thinking, um, with listening in there as well, I'd, I'd worked it out for myself. Um, whereas uh, now, certainly since the last, well, not the last, since the Conservative government came back in, 2010, like an like an unwanted kill of a uh, tribe of dog rapists. Um, <laughs> they, uh, the, you know, it, it's taken. It, it became more. You would say it moved to the centre for a while, and now it's. I would say it has a slight right wing bias, particularly against our budget Bernie Sanders, uh, Jeremy Corbyn, yeah, Corbyn at the moment. Mm-hmm. Now. Now, but I can, uh, but I can watch the news and be, and now, whereas I used to apply that other filter to it, I apply the filter of assuming it's right, slightly to the right now. And you know what? Since I understand the medium, I'm comfortable with that. And I must admit, and maybe, maybe this is Brexit Britain, maybe this is Trump's America. I don't understand how other people who've lived in this world don't can't apply that filter as well like for me sometimes i watch sky news which is you know the british equivalent of fox right just to see what the enemy are thinking Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely and b just because it's thoroughly incompetent stuff i mean these people are orange idiots screaming (laughs) about things they don't understand i remember seeing one thing years ago where there, were t- there was some plane was going to crash near Atlanta, and they didn't even fact check stuff. They were it's the biggest airport in this in the continental United States. It's the you know they ended up downgrading their initial dramatic assessment of the situation to it's you know it's a it's a tiny regional airport, and the guy just wants to come down for a cigarette. But it began as this. They, they don't even have the capacity to, to, to really tell the news. On on the day of 9-11, Kay Burley, who was a particularly noxious Sky News uh, presenter, said that the entire eastern seaboard of the United States was under attack. She said those words as a, as a, as a newscaster. Um, but yeah. But I, again, I watch that. It's almost as entertainment. Um, but, but there we are. I suppose other people are a lot of people are very easily influenced by the news media. I'm right. just not entirely sure. And, and that's and that's where it comes down to, you know, if everybody just did exactly as I said, then all your problems would be fixed, of course. But critical thinking yeah, yeah. in all things. Absolutely. Yeah, but, well, uh, you know, obviously my beliefs are the most rational beliefs. Yeah, clearly. So, that's, that, well, that's just obviously because they're, they're my beliefs. Um yeah, that's it's it's very difficult to accept that that's not necessarily the case, isn't it? Absolutely, and it's wow, that's it. That's quite the hole we we went into, wasn't it? I don't I don't remember how we got there, but it's it's okay. We got there. Uh, parish parachute. <laughs> the, parish, the parachute was sponsored by a payday loans company as well. So, <laughs> Lord we just, help us. We just inadvertently made more money than we've made in the rest of our careers in the, in the last. <laughs> In the last 25 seconds, congratulations, you can now buy a house. It feels great. feels great. Yeah, yeah. Have, having little to nothing to do with any of that, Julia's got a uh, solo album as well. I, I heard, she I heard has, about this. Yes, she has. She keeps telling people, oh, Falco wouldn't do a song on it. She never sent me a song. So, <laughs> And as you know from previous experience, you sent me a couple of songs. 
I'm fucking terrible at writing stuff over other people's things. I just can't do it. Um, in the last few years, I've been sent seven or eight things, and I've completed none of them. A few years ago, <laughs> a band called Calm, not, not the Dutch, not the Dutch band, um, but a, a friend's band who were excellent, who were kind of, uh, kind of like shellac but if shellac were on the kind of sex offenders register um <laughs> real really quite disturbing stuff they did one really really good album which is really really great called snake magnet um and i've totally forgotten my point it was... collaboration no. taking forever. Collab- yeah they, they sent me a song and this guy john leaves in the band uh who did the cover art for curses actually he sent us this one song, and he also he's, he's he used to tour as a tech for the Bronx. So the guy from the Bronx did a, okay. a one you know, doing his vocal over that, and he sent me the same song. But I just I just couldn't write over it, so I um I just recorded a multi-tracked apology, which lasted for for two minutes, and they used that as a B-side instead. So I was, <laughs> didn't have any of the original original music, but I just I can't do it and. For me, somebody will give me some music, and I need that music, and then I need to be able to play around with it before I can, you know, put a, put an actual uh, vocal into it. I can't. So yeah, I feel I'm a, I'm a very bad friend in a lot of ways of stuff like that. But I just I've never been able to do it successfully. Oh, I've got this great song for you to sing on. I'm like, you haven't, and I won't. <laughs> I will well, try. And I will try with in good faith. In, well, in the best faith, somebody is essentially lazy as me can sum it up. Um, and I will try my best. And I guarantee you, it just won't be very good. So I'll end up not doing it. It's okay to have your limits. It's, it's, you don't have to do everything. So, to know what, you, you know, to know what you, your, your strengths are. And yeah, to of course. Through, and, and, what, and, and your weaknesses as well. Um, I'm, I'm usually really good at, at hearing... I always hear somebody play a riff in rehearsal and what ends up being played is always different to what they've originally played. It's always, <laughs> it's always slightly different. It's always right. do, play what you played, but take out that middle note and do, start the riff in a weird place. Because I, I hear, I used to write songs when, um, well, I, I say I used to write songs like I did this all the time. It happened once and <laughs> And then it happened once accidentally, and then I learned to do it. Where sometimes you, I used to record on four track when I was in college, and you'd be playing around, and all of a sudden you'd press play, and you'd come in at the wrong time in a chorus, like in the the third bar, and you'd hear the third, the fourth, and then the first bar of a, of a measure, and that would have a completely different melody in it, and that would be then a melody which would then work perfectly as an outro. Um, so, so there's there's Sometimes with a riff, I go. I've got a riff. It starts here, but it let's 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 pretend that's how I wrote the riff. So my normal rock brain is working there. How about you just start? You play exactly the same notes, but start the riff in a different place. And it's so if you're used to playing with your band and your people, then it's very easy to go through all those different processes for a riff in two minutes, you know, and just to make it a bit more interesting. Um, and that is the story of Jesus. <laughs> but really, it's a story of rock and roll. Yeah, but you know, wasn't wasn't Jesus the wasn't it Jesus who came up with the twin concepts concepts of artist and repertoire? Oh, that's true. And and there's people that like that can't separate the art from the artist as well. I know. Yeah, they're called. <laughs> They're called. I I don't have a funny word there. I, I'm just going to say Merkin because it's a it's a good word. Merkin. As far as preposterous words go, that's that's one of them. So Julia's got a solo record, but you're not on it. She has, no, uh, but it's, it's very good. Uh, she did it with a couple of people who are friends, some people she's known from other bands, and a young man called Francis Black. Um, young up and comer. Because. Uh, uh, <laughs> Ian, uh, who plays with us, who also played on her thing, uh, he was in the band Art Brute, who were recorded a couple of times by uh, by Charles, I believe the correct name is. Um, and uh, so 
he asked him and he just did it in I think in a couple of hours when they were over recording last year or something um, I wasn't involved with it at all but that it seemed it was very nice and she said he's a very nice man and that was the end of that was the end of that but obviously as a result of him being on the record there's probably a bit more interest in it than there would be uh, if he if he wasn't, um, and that it's 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 interesting to see how that kind of thing works, because it is almost like the people, I mean, people love things to click on, you know, and and, and certainly that's yeah, it's understandable. I mean, it's it's on 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 one level it's depressing, but on another level it's totally understandable. And I think one of the things you perhaps learn as as a band. Or maybe this is you know more relevant. Maybe twelve or thirteen years ago, when a lot of people I knew were obsessed with making it, whatever that meant. Um, I'm not sure they were entirely sure at the time. I think they meant not doing a day job and everything's cool. Um, that was the short version of it. But there's a notion that there's everybody was competing for this very limited airspace as it were ah, sure. you know like of course, yeah. there's only so many bands who can be successful or play shows or whatever and I think as you get older even though it's still important to acknowledge feelings like jealousy uh, which is a completely natural human emotion if you're working hard at something and you see somebody else getting or you perceive them to be getting uh, applauded or you know, credit for it. It's completely understandable that you feel jealous, but then as a rational human being, you dismiss that jealousy for the useless load of tat it is, you know? But it's it's some but it but it is important to at least acknowledge that that emotion is natural. Um uh but in in terms of when and so I'd see it with a lot of bands. Somebody would get signed and somebody would be like, oh, they've got signed as if that was now the death knell of their own dreams. If you know people in there having some success or people listening to their music, it can, even if you want to be really cynical about it, it can only benefit you. Sure, absolutely. And it's, it shouldn't be looked at as like a finite resource necessarily either. It's, it's yeah. Absolutely, it's not. Especially, especially if the stuff's good. If your stuff's good, you you're probably not going to be, you know, traveling home on a gold plate at twat wagon, but you're going to, you, you're going to, you, somebody out there is going to like it. And, and ultimately, and ultimately, like I say, even though maybe you can't even afford the road tax on that, on that, on that self same gold plate at twat wagon, you at least know that it was important. And the cool thing about rock and roll is, you get to take that to your grave as well. Right. That That is not a commodity that can be taken away from you or, or it's not. I mean, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure Google will try to monetize it at some stage. Uh, <laughs> pride, you know, <laughs> pride, but, uh, you know, I, it might take another 20 years or so before they can take that away from us. For sure. And that's a, that's a nice thing. That's a nice thing, isn't it? <laughs> That is a nice thing. You are correct, sir. <laughs> uh, hey, you know, it's, it's, it's been a pleasure. Thank you again for doing the show. It's always wonderful to have you on. No problem. It's been, it's been nice to talk. And I wasn't as uh, tired as I was uh, last time. Last time I was really tired. But I only had two beers. You got me just after I got in from a run. So, um, yeah, it's good. I'm, I'm going to write for another hour, I think. And then I'm going to... Uh, I'm gonna then I'm gonna turn in for four AM just like a good boy. There you go. And then the new Christian fitness record is This Taco is not correct. It's on That's right. It's on Bandcamp. Uh it's uh, that's the that's the best place to get it, right? There's a compact disc, I believe. Yeah. There, there is. Um I'm gonna the compact disc is gonna be we're gonna begin manufacturing that in a few days. I raised enough money just in a couple of days to pay for my recording costs, which were very high, and the and the pr producing the CD, I, I would like to get it done on LP, but considering maybe doing a, a pre-order for that, but it's just you know when when you don't have much money, it's always scary. It's it's scary upping the money for something when you have a, a well-paying job, and it, it is preach. <laughs> yeah, you know, but even when you don't, 
or rather, especially when you don't, it can become a bit scary. So, yeah, I'm just, you know, once there's a lot you win, they'll come out on final. Exactly. So be be, be ready yeah, for that. You, well, you, you have a good you you have a good uh, Thursday. Don't um, no racist pamphleteering or uh, no don't punch any traffic signs. Uh, I'll, okay, I'll, I'll do my I'll do don't, my level best for sure. Don't split any infinitives. <laughs> Um, and um, no, no low fat yogurt. Always a good choice, Falco. Thanks so much for joining us, man. All right, mate. Take care. Bye, bye.